Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pua, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to learn how to determine the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt from its solubility product. Now the first thing we want to establish is the relationship between solubility product and solubility. Now, for both solubility product, KSP, and solubility, they are related to a saturated solution of a sparingly soluble salt. Now why must the solution be saturated? It is because only when the solution is saturated, then the system is at equilibrium. Now if I have a container and I start to throw in some salt, which is sparingly soluble, and if it begins dissolving, now if the solution is diluted, we know that more of the salt will continue to dissolve. So therefore, the concentration of the ions in solution will continue to increase. If the concentration of the ions continue to change, so it means that the system is not at equilibrium. And if the system is not at equilibrium, it is not meaningful to talk about the equilibrium constant for the system that is not at equilibrium. So therefore, the solubility product or the KSP, which is essentially the equilibrium constant for the sparingly soluble salt, it is not relevant for diluted solutions. Now, when eventually enough salt dissolve, and I have a saturated solution. Now once the solution is saturated, we know that the concentration of the ions in solution, it becomes a maximum, maximum, but more importantly, it doesn't change any further. So the concentration of the ions in solution becomes a constant. If the concentration of ions in solution, it is a constant, then the system is at equilibrium. We have to understand that for a sparingly soluble salt, the system is only at equilibrium when the solution is saturated because the concentration of the ions in solution it is a maximum and constant. So once the system is at equilibrium, then it is meaningful to talk about the equilibrium constant for a system at equilibrium. So that's where KSP comes in. So KSP is tied directly to a saturated solution. Only when the solution is saturated, then we can talk about KSP or solubility product. Then the next term is solubility. Now solubility is just the amount of the salt, whether it is in terms of gram or it is in terms of number of mole, the amount of the salt that I can dissolve to give me a saturated solution. So solubility is also linked to a saturated solution because if you dissolve this amount of the salt, which is represented by solubility, you dissolve this amount into solution, you end up as a saturated solution. So because KSP is linked to a saturated solution and solubility is also linked to a saturated solution, therefore KSP and solubility, they are related to each other. That is why when we do solubility product, the first portion focuses on the relationship between KSP and solubility. Basically, if you have one value, you can find the other value. If I have KSP, I can find solubility of the salt in water and vice versa. If I have solubility, in principle, I can also calculate KSP. All right, next, let's have an example involving calcium fluoride. So if calcium fluoride is sparingly soluble and I throw this inside water, then we know that CaF2 will dissociate in solution to give me Ca2 plus equals, and of course, F minus equals, and eventually the solution will be saturated and you have a maximum amount of Ca2 plus and maximum amount of F minus in solution. So if it is a sparingly soluble salt, then we will just use a reversible sign to represent this dissociation. So the dissociation of this salt will just look something like this, CaF2 solid. It will dissociate to give me Ca2 plus equals and 2F minus equals. So this will be the dissociation of this sparingly soluble salt. We use a reversible sign because only a tiny amount of this salt will dissolve to give me a small amount of Ca2 plus and F minus in solution. Most of it will exist as CaF2 undissociated or undissolved. Now the next thing is we have to put in solubility and usually we let solubility be X or S 
So I'll just use x as an example. Now remember, solubility is with reference to the salt, how much salt that you can dissolve to give me whatever number of ions in solution. So x is always with reference to the salt. Solubility with reference to calcium fluoride in this case is x. If one mole of CaF2 will dissociate in solution to give me one mole of Ca2 plus and two moles of F minus, the mole ratio is one is to one is to two. Then x moles of CaF2, which is a solubility, it will dissociate in solution to give me x moles of Ca2 plus and 2x moles of F minus. So it just follows the mole ratio involving this dissociation. If it is 1 is to 1 is to 2, this will be x is to x is to 2x. So we know that at equilibrium or when the solution is saturated, the concentration of Ca2 plus at equilibrium will just be equal to x, while the concentration of F minus at equilibrium will be equal to 2x. Now, one thing which is important is this value x here. Even though the concentration of Ca2 plus is equal to x, but the solubility of the salt is not defined in terms of the concentration of Ca2 plus in solution. In this case, this Ca2 plus concentration is equal to x because the mole ratio for the dissociation of the salt is 1 is to 1 is to 2. So therefore, x moles of the salt will give me x moles of Ca2 plus and 2x moles of F minus. Now remember this value, the number or the magnitude just happened to be x, but it is not the solubility. Solubility is always with respect to the salt. How much salt will dissolve? To give me a saturated solution. So once we have the concentration of the ions in solution, the next thing we can do is we can move on to writing out the KSP expression. Now KSP is a very straightforward term. It will just be the concentration of the product raised to the power of the coefficient divided by the concentration of the reactant raised to the power of the coefficient. So I can write out KSP, which is in terms of concentration of product, the coefficient for Ca2 plus is 1, so this will just be concentration for Ca2 plus, power 1. Then I have 2F minus, so this will be concentration of F minus, square term. Then if I look at the reactant, because the reactant will just be calcium fluoride, which is in a solid state, and for solids, it doesn't appear in the KSP expression, or it doesn't appear in equilibrium constant expressions in general, because concentrations of solids are constant. So in principle, it doesn't appear in equilibrium constant. So the KSP will just look something like this in terms of the dissociation of the ions. Ca2 plus power 1 times F minus square. Then I already have the concentration of Ca2 plus in terms of x and F minus in terms of x. So I can just substitute these two terms inside here. KSP will just be equal to Ca2 plus concentration, which is x. So I can put it as x here. F minus concentration, it is 2x. So I can put 2x here. And there's a square term, so I also have to include it in. So KSP will look something like this. I just do some simplification. This will be 4x cubed. So what you notice in this case is KSP is equal to 4x cubed, where x is the value for solubility. So that is the relationship between solubility product and solubility. If you're given KSP, then you can just use this expression to find solubility and vice versa. If you're given solubility, you can use the same expression to find KSP. So of course, depending on the salt that you're given and the number of ions dissociated, the KSP expression in terms of solubility will look a bit different. But by and large, the idea it is the same. We should be able to write out an expression involving KSP and solubility. With one of these terms, you can find the other term. All right, so that was the discussion involving the relationship between solubility and solubility product of a sparingly soluble salt and how to use KSP to find solubility and vice versa. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.